Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India the discussion you see the last lecture uh, we derived certain important properties of the fundamental group of Riemann surface namely we um, uh, found that the Riemann surface is the fundamental group is uh, torsion free namely you cannot have any elements of finite order okay. Uh, and um, we also uh, found that the uh, only types of elements that you can get in the fundamental group are the Mobius transformations which are either parabolic or hyperbolic okay. So uh, you cannot have elliptic elements in the, uh, in the fundamental group uh, you cannot have uh, you know loxodromic non hyperbolic elements and uh, of course in all this we are identifying the fundamental group of the Riemann surface with the choice of some base point with the deck transformation group of the universal covering and uh, we must remember that the deck transformation group uh, is a subgroup of Mobius transformations okay fine. So I will now have to go uh, on with trying to uh, get the uh, classification of Riemann surfaces which have universal covering the upper half plane uh, uh, and which have abelian fundamental groups okay so that is what I am going to start with. So, um, so let me write that down. Um, um, uh, Riemann surfaces x with pi 1 capital X comma small x abelian um, and universal cover covering uh, space u uh, which is a set of all z and c which is a real part uh, I mean imaginary part um, imaginary part of z is positive okay. So uh, we are looking at these types of Riemann surfaces um, of course small x is a fixed point of capital X all right and of course I should also remind you that the uh, the upper half plane is a uh, biholomorphic to the unit disc okay. So um, uh, well if you see first of all if um, uh, um, x is simply connected uh, then uh, then pi 1 is 0 pi 1 of x comma x is trivial uh, is 0 okay and uh, uh, x uh, uh, to x um, identity map uh, is a covering uh, is a universal covering covering. So in this case x is uh, uh, by holomorphic to u okay. So um, we look at the situation when um, uh, the, fu the fundamental group is non-trivial okay. Uh, so I um, so first of all so let me draw a diagram uh, so you have um, well you have x here and um, so I have the projection the covering projection this is x x sub unit uh, is u okay uh, 
this is x sub unit the universal covering space and um, well uh, because of this uh, uh, because of this you know uh, if you fix a base point uh, small x in capital X then the fundamental group below is identified with a subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms above and that subgroup is precisely the uh, group of uh, subgroup of deck transformations of this cover okay. So the corresponding diagram is uh, well let me also draw it here uh, uh, so I will have to write across this board it is all right so I have pi 1 uh, of capital X comma small x uh, there is an identification uh, there is an identification so I put this say it is an isomorphism this is an identification via P uh, that means but because of this covering and this identification is with the deck transformation group of this this cover which is a subgroup of uh, well uh, the holomorphic automorphisms of uh, the universal covering space and uh, um, well I can uh, go one step further and uh, uh, make you realize that uh, this is sitting also uh, in the holomorphic automorphisms of the whole complex plane. Okay, so if you want, um, well, it's um, maybe I, I remove this uh, letter, uh, these few letters, so that I have some more space to write. So let me remove this. So here is, so here is, uh, so this I write it as bi by holomorphic. Okay, and so this is sitting inside uh, automorphisms, the holomorphic automorphisms of the complex plane. Mind you that uh, uh, this is identified with uh, PSL 2R okay these are uh, Mobius transformations with uh, uh, of the form Z going to A Z plus B by C Z plus D uh, with A B C D real numbers and A D minus B C equal to 1 okay uh, these are the representatives here and of course this is the full group of Mobius transformations which is uh, PSL 2 C so this is all complex entries okay um, and this is a subgroup of that right so that is because of this covering now um, so um, uh, so so I am uh, so assume so I am here I am assuming uh, that the first fundamental group is non zero okay assume the first fundamental group is non zero um, well so the first um, uh, the first uh, statement I want to make is that the the deck transformation group uh, can contain only uh, parabolic or hyperbolic elements okay this is what we have seen la last time I mean elliptic elements are not allowed why they are not allowed is because an elliptic uh, uh, holomorph uh, Mobius transformation will fix a point of view and the deck transformation a non trivial deck transform transformation is not supposed to fix any point okay otherwise it will become equal to the identity transformation. So uh, elliptic transformations are not allowed and we have also seen that for the upper half plane uh, the condition of loxodromic is the same as it being hyperbolic uh, a Mobius transformation which is uh, loxodromic and which preserves the upper half plane has to be also hyperbolic necessarily hyperbolic okay. So, so there are only two possibilities. Uh, so let me write that let me write that down here because I want space for some more uh, to extend this diagram. So uh, there are um, uh, there are uh, the uh, so uh, deck um, u p x can have can have only uh, parabolic. Uh, uh, and <laughs> hyperbolic elements okay so this is what we uh, we have uh, from the from the last lecture and you see I claim that uh, because of this additional assumption that the the fundamental group is abelian 
which means that the deck transformation group is again after all the fundamental group is uh, identified with the deck transformation group. I claim that because of this abelian nature which makes every deck transformation commute with every other deck transformation okay this commutativity forces two mutually exclusive cases namely one in which all the elements are parabolic and the other in which all the elements are hyperbolic. You, so what I am trying to say is a parabolic and a hyperbolic element cannot commute okay so we will we'll see why that is true so uh, so let me write a few lemmas so I, I let, let me write a lemma uh, uh, suppose um, uh, A uh, and uh, A prime are Mobius transformations uh, transformations with uh, you know uh, uh, a A prime is equal to A prime A all right that is A and A prime commute okay so and A, A and A prime are a pair of commuting Mobius transformations then A is a translation is a translation implies A prime is a translation okay. So uh, I am just telling the uh, very obvious fact that only trans uh, translations com can commute only with translations okay. So uh, what is the proof the proof for this is you see uh, uh, you know uh, A is a translation uh, means that uh, uh, A, uh, uh, A, A of infinity equal to infinity is the unique fixed point okay if A is a translation then infinity is a fixed point and you know uh, translations are uh, parabolic okay in fact an element is parabolic a Mobius transformation is parabolic if and only if it is conjugate to a translation so uh, and if it is parabolic by definition it has only one fixed point so infinity is a unique fixed point all right now now you see a a prime a of infinity will be a a prime infinity okay so what but you see a of infinity is infinity so this will tell you that a prime infinity has to be infinity why because you see what does this tell you a of infinity is infinity so you get a prime infinity is a of a prime infinity okay that means a prime infinity is a fixed point for a but the only fixed point for a is infinity therefore a prime infinity is equal to infinity but if a prime infinity is equal to infinity then a prime is a translation okay so this so this implies well uh, we have to say a little bit more this implies that a prime of z is of the form well it is of the form alpha z plus beta if infinity is a fixed point for a, a Mobius transformation then uh, it has to be of this form right it has to be of this form now you see put uh, I mean I am just trying to claim that this alpha is 1 I am just trying to claim that alpha is 1 okay so you put A as uh, put A of Z see after all A is a translation so you write it as Z plus uh, uh, well since it is A prime let me put primes here and write for A of Z Z plus beta okay and write out the condition that a prime a of z is a a prime of z for every z so you know a prime a of z is equal to a a prime of z for all z what this will tell you is going to tell you that uh, well uh, so if I if I so what does it mean first apply a then apply a prime that is going to be the same as first applying a prime and then applying a to z so first apply a to z I will get z plus beta and apply a prime to that so I get alpha prime z plus beta plus beta prime is equal to I will get here I have to first apply a prime which is uh, if I apply a prime to z I will get alpha prime z plus beta prime and then I have to apply a which is just adding beta okay. Now if you compare uh, both sides you will get that uh, uh, the beta prime uh, uh, the beta primes are going to cancel and then I will get 
and the alpha prime z's are going to cancel I am going to get alpha prime beta is equal to uh, um, alpha prime beta is equal to beta okay this is what I am going to get and mind you uh, um, of course um, I want to rule out the case that beta is uh, uh, 0 so that I can cancel by beta and conclude alpha prime is 1 so uh, you see uh, if beta equal to 0 corresponds to the case when A is the identity okay and uh, I am assuming uh, let me assume that A is not the identity I am, I am not I do not want to look at the identity transformation okay because that is not uh, uh, very interesting A uh, not equal to identity okay right. So, so A is not equal to identity so beta is non zero therefore I can cancel beta and I will get alpha prime is 1 if alpha prime is 1 then A prime z is z plus beta prime so it is also a translation alright. So that proves this lemma alright. Now uh, uh, I will make uh, another uh, simple lemma um, uh, so what this tells you is that if a Mobius transformation com com uh, commutes with a translation then it has to be a translation okay. Now but you know translation is just uh, up to conjugate translation is just a parabolic element so I am saying the same thing will happen for a parabolic element also okay namely if a Mobius transformation commutes with a parabolic element it has to be parabolic okay. So let me write that lemma suppose uh, A and A prime commute uh, A is a uh, uh, A is a uh, 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 a, a being uh, A being parabolic okay suppose A and A prime commute A being parabolic okay then uh, then you know A prime is also parabolic then A prime is also parabolic right. So uh, uh, what is the proof the proof is well you see uh, A is parabolic so by our characterization of parabolic transformations you can find a B such that conjugating A by B makes it a translation okay. So uh, can find B such that B A B is B inverse is a translation okay and um, well um, again uh, in all these cases you know the case when uh, one of the transformations is uh, is a is the identity transformation I am not at all worried about that case because that is the uninteresting case okay. So well uh, B A B inverse is a translation but now notice so that means what B A B inverse has unique fixed point infinity it means a translation now you see B A prime B inverse times B A B inverse okay this will be just B A prime A B inverse but this is B A A prime B inverse because uh, A prime A is A A prime and then I can write it as B A B inverse B A prime B inverse in other, in other words I am just saying that because A and A prime commute so do their conjugates by B okay. Now look at lemma 1 lemma 1 says that if 2 Mobius transformations commute and one is a translation then so is the other okay. So by, 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 the, by the preceding lemma by the previous lemma what will happen is that B, B A B inverse is a translation so B A prime B inverse is also a translation and uh, you see if B A prime B inverse is a translation then of course A prime is uh, parabolic okay. So the moral of the story is that uh, uh, if the deck transformation has one parabolic element then every element is parabolic I mean so it cont contains only parabolic elements 
okay so so uh, if uh, so either either deck uh, u p x has only parabolic elements or only hyperbolic elements okay. So, uh, the moral of the story is that you have two distinct cases mutually exclusive, exclusive cases one in which the deck transformation consists of only parabolic elements the other one uh, is the case when the deck transformation comes consists only of hyperbolic elements okay. So, uh, so let us assume that the deck transformation group consists of only parabolic elements okay assume assume the former namely uh, the deck transformation group has only parabolic elements okay. So uh, well uh, so here again I will distinguish between two cases I will distinguish between two cases um, just for clarity um, uh, suppose uh, 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 suppose one one of the elements of the deck transformation group uh, is is a translation see after all the deck transformation group contains parabolic elements okay uh, and you know if necessary I can make a conjugation and make a parabolic element into a translation. But even without the necessity of that suppose there is one element namely a parabolic deck transformation which is already a translation then you see the again this lemma will tell you that all other elements are translations okay then by the first lemma above above all uh, elements are translations. all the elements are translations okay. Now you see so what happens in this case is well you see you have deck transformation groups uh, is well uh, it is identified um, with a subgroup of uh, translations so translations are of the form z going to z plus beta okay this is a this is a group under addition translations okay I, I mean if you uh, well I mean this is a group under composition of mappings and if I identify z going to z plus beta uh, with say the complex number beta okay then uh, this is identified with uh, complex numbers and this is uh, well this is a group under addition. So the translations are Mobius transformations under composition and uh, uh, identifying z going to z plus beta with beta the complex number beta will identify this uh, uh, abelian group of translations under composition with the additive group of complex numbers okay. Now uh, notice that uh, so I, I again want to uh, uh, make the same statements that I did when we were trying to classify uh, Riemann surfaces with universal covering space the complex plane uh, and with the uh, non-zero fundamental group okay. If you go back and uh, recall what happened at that time we found that the uh, the fundamental group turned out to be certainly abelian that was because uh, just like in this case we were able to identify the deck transformation group as a subgroup of uh, you know uh, uh, as a subgroup of an abelian group C under addition okay and subgroup of translations okay 
and uh, uh, then you know there we made uh, the statement that the, the duct transformation group is a discrete z module okay and the discreteness came because of the uh, fact uh, 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 the fact that this is a universal covering and these are duct transformations okay and then we gave the statement that a discrete z sub module of C has to be either generated by one uh, integer multiples of one non zero complex number in which case it is isomorphic to z or it is generated by integral multiples uh, linear integer linear combinations of two non zero complex numbers with non real ratio in which case it is isomorphic to z cross z okay. So in the by by uh, the same kind of argument what you can see is that uh, deck uh, the deck transformation group is a discrete z sub module of C okay. So this the, the argument uh, the, the, the proof of this is exactly as it was for the case when the universal covering was a complex uh, plane alright there is no difference in the proof. But there is something new now you see uh, notice that these are all autom holomorphic automorphisms of U since these are holomorphic automorphisms of U. Uh, I want to uh, I want you to remember that uh, uh, the uh, the the entries beta that you get here that is the image of this there okay are go is, is going to land inside R okay. The the elements here are certain holomorphic automorphisms the upper half plane but the holomorphic automorphisms the upper half plane are Mobius transformations with uh, you know. Uh, with entry uh, of the form z going to a z plus b by c z plus d with a b c d real okay. So the point I want to make is that beta is real okay. So uh, uh, so what you actually get is a discrete z sub module of c which is contained in r okay which is which is contained in R okay. So, uh, so you know now we have this uh, now let me recall that lemma a discrete z sub module of C can have only 3 possibilities either it is 0 this is 0 sub module or it is isomorphic to Z and it is integral multiples of a single non zero complex number and the third case is it is isomorphic to z cross z and it is integer linear combinations of two non zero complex numbers but these two non zero complex numbers are supposed to have non real ratio that means they are supposed to be linearly independent over r but you see if it is a dis it is contained in r i cannot find two entries which are uh, uh, linearly independent over r itself so therefore the only possibility is uh, that it has to be isomorphic to z okay so therefore the deck transformation group is isomorphic to z okay the deck transformation group is z there is no other choice okay and uh, the isomorphism is given by uh, so so that means there is a generator here okay and the generator is a translation okay and uh, every other translation is just uh, applying this translation or its inverse finitely many times that is all that you have in this group okay. So the amazing thing is that in this case the direct transformation group is just isomorphic to C okay fine. So, uh, uh, um, so, so I have I have taken so this is the case when one of the elements is, is a translation alright. Now suppose uh, one of the elements is not a translation okay let me go to the other case then uh, of course all the other elements are also not going to be translations because you know the translations commute only with translations all right so suppose on the other hand that uh, 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 one of the elements of deck
is is not a translation suppose it is not a translation all right. Then uh, then every other member is also not a translation because they all commute with this one okay because it is a commutative group then the same then the same holds for uh, uh, so let me call that element as A suppose one of the elements A uh, in the direct transformation group is not a translation then the same holds for all other elements namely all the others are also not translations okay. Again uh, you can find a B so that B A B inverse becomes a translation after all B is going to be the uh, a Mobius transformation that is going to take the fixed point of A to infinity that is all you need alright. So uh, find choose a B choose a B so that B A B inverse is a translation okay I can choose a B so that B A B inverse is a translation but you know uh, if B A B inverse is a translation then B A prime B inverse is also a translation for every other element that is because B A all the B A prime B inverses they will all commute with B A B inverse okay. So then then as seen in this uh, second lemma above as seen in uh, the second lemma above uh, B A prime B inverse is also a translation for every A prime the direct transformation group. So what is uh, the situation now? The situation now is that uh, again you will find that the deck transformation group is isomorphic to Z okay uh, only thing is that you have to shift to an isomorphic cover. So how do you do that? Let me go back to this diagram here let me go back to this diagram here and write it down. So you see I have this B you see what is this B? So I have U sitting inside the complex plane okay the upper half plane sitting inside the complex plane so this is uh, this is a subset uh, uh, relationship that I have written do not confuse this with you I am just writing u subset of C all right and then I have I have this B, B you see B uh, is a Mobius transformation all right and B will take uh, well B will take C to C okay in fact if you want uh, maybe I should put C union infinity um, because it may take a finite point to infinity so I have to take the whole uh, uh, so here again I think uh, I have made a mistake uh, in fact I should write C union infinity okay this is of course the whole group of Mobius transformations including the point at infinity okay. If you take only uh, trans uh, holomorphic automorphisms of C then it is always of the form it is upper triangular form okay so you will not get PSL to C okay so please correct this. Uh, small mistake okay so well I have u and this is b of u so b of u well u is uh, uh, in the this upper half plane in the in c union infinity and uh, b is an isomorphism of uh, c union infinity c in infinity and it will take u isomorphically to b of u okay and if I take this map defined to be by, by the defined by the community of this diagram it is first apply B inverse then apply P then you see this is also a covering after all it is an isomorphism followed by a covering so this also this also a covering of X this also universal and this also universal covering because after all BU is isomorphic to U it is biholomorphic to U so it is also topologically homeomorphic to U so it is also simply connected so this is also another avatar of the universal covering for X okay. Now what does this what happens to this when I do it at the level of deck transformations. So what is going to happen is just like this covering identified the fundamental group here with the 
uh, as a, the deck transformation group a subgroup of polymorphic automorphisms above the same thing should happen here. So, what I am going to get is I am going to get something like this. So, I will get another isomorphism identification this is via p circle beta inverse p circle b inverse okay and this is going to give me the deck transformation group of the, the other isomorphic cover namely b of u p circle b inverse x okay and this is going to be well this is a uh, subgroup of the uh, holomorphic automorphisms of b of u b of u is uh, uh, some domain in the complex plane which is uh, biholomorphic to u all right and uh, of course this is again contained inside uh, uh, the uh, well automorphism group of uh, all uh, 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 Mobius, I mean the, the, the all the Mobius, all Mobius, all possible Mobius transformations, right? And what is this map? What is this map? This map is just so. How do you get a deck transformation here? Okay. Well, uh, I take a point here. I go by B inverse, apply a deck transformation there, and then come back. This is how, starting with a deck transformation here, I produce a deck transform transformation there. So, what is the map here? The map here is just conjugation by B. It is just a uh, going to b a b inverse okay. So, give me a deck transformation a here okay give me a deck transformation a here that is by definition uh, a holomorphic automorphism of u which is uh, uh, which is uh, 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 going to preserve uh, the fibers okay and how do I to what deck transformation does it go here it is just it is conjugate okay. So, this is just a going to b a b inverse and it is the same map everywhere. So, there is an isomorphism like this there is an isomorphism like this there is an isomorphism like this in all these cases the map is just a going to b a b inverse alright that is the map it is just a going to b a b inverse alright. So, um, so here also it is the map a going to b a b inverse. So, this is the map I am looking at. So, let us go back to the current situation we are in uh, we have taken the situation that uh, all the deck transformations are not uh, 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 translations, but then we conjugate by a single uh, we pick any one deck, tra deck transformation and you conjugate it with a single b. So, that uh, uh, the after conjugation it becomes a translation then everything becomes a translation all right. So, what happens is that this so what is this this is see this is just b dot deck uh, u, u p x dot b inverse that is what it is it is you are actually conjugating the whole group by b okay and well let me draw a line so that it does not and so in this case this group namely this now this is a subgroup of translations okay this becomes a subgroup of translations all right and uh, again uh, it's going to be a discrete it, ca it can be identified with the discrete z uh, submodule of c contained in r okay it's going to be the same thing as the earlier case and it that will go that will force that this is isomorphic to z okay. So, in both cases the deck transformation group is actually isomorphic to z the integers and it is generated by a single translation okay uh, namely it consists of integer multiples of a single translation uh, or rather I should say uh, translations by integer multiples of a single non-zero complex number okay. So, uh, in, in this case uh, deck uh, u p x is isomorphic to deck b of u p circle b inverse x uh, which is equal to incidentally the conjugate of this it is just b dot deck uh, u p x dot b inverse and this 
uh, is is uh, isomorphic to Z. Okay, because again, uh, let me repeat, it is uh, it is discrete. It's a discrete Z submodule of C, and it is going to land inside uh, R. Okay, it's a discrete Z. So uh, as uh, linearly independent elements over R, it can contain only one. Okay, in which case you can get only Z. Okay, the only other the only other possibility is you can get Z direct sum Z. You cannot get Z direct sum Z. Okay, because you cannot find two translations here. You cannot find two real numbers uh, which are linearly independent over R. Okay, R over R has dimension one. Okay, any uh, maximum linearly independent subset has only one element, right? So, so the moral of the story is that if your uh, 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 deck transformation group consists of only uh, parabolic transformations, in that case the deck transformation group is just isomorphic to Z. Okay. Now I'm going to say that literally the same thing happens uh, in the other case, namely when the deck transformation group contains only hyperbolic elements. Okay. So let me do that. Um, I think uh, I'll retain this diagram on this side, right? And I'll kind of uh, uh, um, so so let me so what I'm going to do is. Uh, let me draw a line so that okay. Um. So let us go to the other case. Uh, assume deck the deck transformation group uh, U P X has only hyperbolic elements. assume it has only hyperbolic elements okay. Now um, so again you know uh, a Mobius transformation so, so let us pick one uh, let us pick one hyperbolic element and uh, you know you take if you take a uh, hyperbolic Mobius transformation then you can conjugate it by a suitable Mobius transformation so that it its fixed points are of the form uh, are 0 and infinity so it is of the form z going to lambda z and since and if this Mobius transformation is going to preserve the upper half plane then you know lambda has to be real and ram, lambda has to be positive because any hyper any uh, I mean that is a characterization of uh, hyperbolic uh, Mobius transformations okay. So um, so uh, pick uh, a not equal to identity uh, in uh, uh, deck the deck transformation group and find B so that uh, B A B inverse of Z is lambda Z lambda is going to be real lambda is positive okay. So this is th this is possible because uh, uh, because of our of our characterization of hyperbolic Mobius transformations right. Now uh, I want to say that uh, every if you take any A prime because every other A prime here commutes with A I want to say that every if you conjugate the every other A prime with the same B it is still going to be of the same form that is what I want to say okay. So uh, suppose suppose A prime is another deck transformation okay. So uh, mind you if uh, uh, if uh, a already has fixed points uh, 0 and infinity if a already has fixed points 0 and infinity then you can take b to be identity okay you do not have to really look for a b different from the identity right. So suppose a prime is a deck transformation uh, is another deck transformation in this group uh, then again you see uh, uh, B A B inverse and B A prime B inverse commute okay we have seen that this is true because A and A prime commute alright and if you look at uh, B A B inverse of uh, 
b a prime b inverse of 0 is equal to uh, uh, let me put uh, z I am just writing the commutativity out okay and what I am going to do is I am going to put z equal to 0 you put z equal to 0 what I will get is I will get b a b inverse of b a prime b inverse of 0 is equal to b a prime b inverse of 0 because b a b inverse of 0 is 0 okay alright. So what it will tell you and if I put you if you put z equal to infinity okay you will get b a b inverse of b a prime b inverse of infinity is equal to b a prime b inverse of infinity. So what this will tell you if you put 0 z equal to 0 and z equal to infinity you will it will tell you that b a prime b inverse of 0 and infinity are the 2 fixed points of b a b inverse so they are 1 among the 2 points 0 and infinity. So this will tell you that b a b b a prime b inverse of 0 b a prime b inverse of infinity they both belong to 0 infinity they have to be one of these two okay notice that these two are going to be fixed points for b a b inverse and b a b inverse has precisely two fixed points the Mobius transformation cannot have more than two fixed points those two fixed points are 0 and infinity because of this form that we have, we have, we have assumed right. So now we, we claim the obvious that you know b a b inverse b a prime b inverse of 0 is actually 0 and b a prime b inverse of infinity is actually infinity and not the other way round uh, that is where we use the fact that a prime is actually hyperbolic okay. So the claim is <coughs> uh, b a prime b inverse of 0 equal to 0 b a prime b inverse of infinity is equal to infinity okay this is this is the claim right um, well of course they cannot be equal because you know Mobius transformations are 1 to 1 they cannot be equal so either uh, this is equal to 0 and that is equal to infinity or the other way around this may be infinity and that may be 0 if you assume that you will get a contradiction so we can we can we can try to work that out suppose suppose not so b a prime b inverse of 0 is infinity and b a prime b inverse of infinity is 0 okay well you see I uh, will work out a small lemma you uh, this must be obvious uh, to you but we can write it out uh, if uh, uh, a, a double prime of 0 is infinity and a double prime of infinity is 0 then uh, a is uh, elliptic okay because you see uh, proof is you see write a double prime of z as uh, as a z plus b by c z plus d okay with a d minus b c is equal to 1 write it in this form okay. Now uh, a double prime of 0 is infinity okay so when I plug 0 inside this I should get infinity that means the denominator should vanish okay and so when I plug in 0 uh, I get infinity so let me write that down I will get b by c z plus d is infinity okay and uh, you know this should force that uh, uh, c is 0 um, um, no I will get b by d so I will get b by d sorry I will get b by d and this will force that d is 0 alright. Uh, I cannot divide a complex number by another to get infinity unless the denominator is 0 okay and if d is 0 mind you so so that will tell you already that bc is minus 1 okay and then a double prime of uh, infinity is 0 okay so when I plug in infinity uh, if it is 0 see the point is you divide both numerator and denominator by z 
So you can also write as if so long as z is not 0 you can write as a plus b by z divided by c plus d by z if I plug in infinity the 1 by z terms will go off so I will get a by c so I will get a by c equal to infinity I mean a by c equal to 0 that will tell me that a is 0 okay so therefore what I will get is I will get a double prime uh, matrix uh, as matrix is of the form well uh, a is 0 b is uh, uh, b is as it is uh, c is minus 1 by b okay and uh, d is 0 okay and you see uh, this is of course uh, determinant 1 all right but what is its trace squared trace squared is 0 that means it is elliptic okay trace squared a is 0 that implies a is elliptic okay so that proves this uh, lemma so uh, now if you look at this lemma then uh, b a prime b inverse of 0 is infinity and b a prime b inverse infinity is 0 if that happens then b a prime b inverse will become elliptic that means a prime is elliptic but we have assumed a prime to be hyperbolic after all so it is not possible okay so uh, uh, so the claim uh, uh, it holds okay so the moral of the story is uh, that this claim holds and therefore if you take any other deck transformation a prime then b a prime b inverse is also of the form z going to some mu of z all right where mu is and is hyperbolic so that mu is, uh, re is real and mu is positive okay so so this implies b a prime b inverse of z is equal to some mu of z mu real mu positive okay and of course please remember that in all these cases uh, lambda is not 1 uh, uh, unless a is the identity uh, unless a is the identity lambda is not 1 so if I have taken a not equal to identity then this lambda cannot be 1 and if a prime is not identity then mu cannot be 1 all right now uh, 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 mind you again I have uh, I have the same kind of uh, situation so you see again what will happen is that I uh, will have deck transformation group uh, 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 of the original cover u p x uh, isomorphic to the conjugate which is a deck transformation group uh, uh, of this uh, isomorphic cover p circle b inverse okay which is in which is just a conjugate of this by b it is so it is b dot deck uh, u p x b dot b inverse it is a conjugate okay and well you see uh, what I will what this is this is a subgroup of uh, Mobius transformations of the form z going to uh, mu z mu real mu positive okay okay it is a subgroup of that all right and you see uh, notice that uh, the composition here uh, will be corresponding to composition here but then it will become multiplicative okay if I uh, if I compose z going to mu 1 z with z going to mu 2 z I will get z going to mu 1 into mu 2 z okay so you know if I want to identify it with uh, additive sub module of c I have to take a log okay and the log will convert this multiplicative group into an additive group all right and I can take log because mu's are all uh, real positive all right so what I do is I simply take uh, the log map okay I take the log map namely I just send z going to mu z to uh, just log mu okay so this is the uh, real logarithm this is the real logarithm to the base e right so I take this and what I end up with is uh, well this is identified with uh, 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 this is a uh, so what I get is going to be uh, uh, this is going to be identified with r plus under addition uh, r, r plus under addition so r plus is 
uh, uh, um, why do I get uh, oh yeah I need also negative again. so I get R under addition I get R under addition right. So correct I can have uh, negative logarithms if mu is less than 1 correct so this identified uh, as a additive subgroup of R so under this identification the deck transformation group becomes an additive subgroup of R okay again it will become a discrete Z module uh, it, it will again become a discrete Z sub module of C the additive subgroup of C which is contained inside R okay. So again uh, uh, the same argument as before applies and it will tell you that it is isomorphic to Z okay. So mind you this is contained in C comma plus after all R comma plus is a Z sub module of C comma plus right. So uh, again uh, deck uh, uh, up x is I is identified with a discrete z sub module of uh, c contained in r okay the the discreteness can again be proved in a similar way okay by making use of uh, these uh, admissible neighborhoods okay so you again prove the discreteness all right and it becomes a discrete z model of c contained in r and therefore it is isomorphic to c okay hence isomorphic to c okay so uh, the moral of the story is if you have a Riemann surface X with up with uh, fundamental group abelian that is very important and universal cover the upper half plane then its fundamental group is just isomorphic to Z you do not have any choice alright. So that is the upshot of the whole uh, uh, argument okay. So uh, hence uh, any Riemann surface with uh, abelian pi 1 and universal covering u uh, has 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 pi 1 isomorphic to z uh, uh, or pi 1 isomorphic to 0 okay or pi 1 equal to 0 okay. Now uh, uh, well actually this argument gives you uh, also the coverings of uh, uh, I mean also the classification of Riemann surfaces which have upper half plane as universal cover okay we have just have to go a little bit more and write it down but what is more striking is that one can write down the following theorem. So theorem uh, if X is a Riemann surface. Uh, such that pi 1 of x is isomorphic to z cross z then x has to be a complex torus so here is an amazing theorem you take a Riemann surface with fundamental group isomorphic to z cross z then it has to be only a complex torus and what is the proof well it uh, the fundamental group is not 0 so the universal cover cannot be p1 cannot be the external complex plane c union infinity which is p1 because in that case the fundamental group is 0 right uh, if of course the universal covering is the complex plane we have already proved that if the fundamental group is isomorphic to z cross z okay then it is a complex torus all right and the covering space cannot be u the universal covering cannot be u because we have just now proved that if the covering universal covering is u then the fundamental group is isomorphic to z and z is not isomorphic to z cross z all right therefore uh, uh, you see it is an amazing theorem that you put a topological condition on the definition of Riemann surface and you uh, it is it the theorem tells you that it has to be of a particular type okay. So you get that as an upshot of this right okay so let me uh, make a few more remarks to uh, 
complete this discussion right. So let us look at uh, both of this, uh, these cases when the uh, universal covering is the upper half plane and uh, either the red transformation group contains uh, only parabolic elements or only hyperbolic elements and look at what the coverings are okay. So, uh, so let me write that down uh, if uh, x has universal covering u okay and uh, deck the and the deck transformation group uh, uh, so um, I should say and uh, fundamental abelian and, and abelian fundamental group we have we have two cases so case 1 uh, the deck transformation group is uh, uh, is isomorphic to z okay and uh, and is uh, generated by um, a translation uh, let me say by a by a parabolic element okay we have this case um, okay uh, we may we may choose uh, uh, we uh, by so let me take the generator as a okay choose b so that you see b a b inverse of z is z plus 1 okay. So in both cases you are conjugating uh, the whole deck transformation group by a single Mobius transformation that makes it into a completely a group of translations uh, in the parabolic case and in the other case of course it is it becomes a multiplicative group of uh, uh, tra transformations of, of the form z going to mu z right so we are in the first case right so you can so without loss of generality uh, choose the b so that the translation that it is transformed to is z going to z plus 1 all right now see uh, what will happen is so you see i have this diagram um, so i have b of u to uh, uh, x okay i have this covering p circle b inverse okay and uh, this is also the same as taking b of u and uh, well going modulo uh, the, uh, the this translation group okay so this is going modulo z okay so you see uh, z is just uh, identified with the conjugate of the deck transformation group by b which is actually the deck transformation group of this cover all right and you see this uh, uh, this covering map in this case can be identified uh, it can be identified with uh, so this is something that is isomorphic to u all right so it can be identified with u uh, to uh, uh, um, u mod z okay it can be identified in this way all right so let me put it like this you can find an identification like this and this map is just uh, the exponential map z going to e power 2 pi i z okay so what you must understand is that uh, uh, going uh, we have already seen that the exponential map is uh, is a covering map from c to c star okay exponential map is a covering map from c to c star all right and but if you uh, instead of c star if you take delta star which is the punctured unit disc the unit disc minus the origin and you take the inverse image okay it is a restriction of a covering of a covering map to an open subset of the base so that continues to be a covering map so this is still a covering map and the fact is that this is delta star 
this is this is delta star delta star is just uh, the punctured unit disc it is the unit disc minus the origin okay. So the moral of the story so you can check this the moral of the story is that in the parabolic case the uh, the covering mind you we already know that these these two can be identified okay uh, if you give me a universal covering then the covering space model of the deck transformation group can be identified with the base alright and I am saying that this can be identified as a covering with uh, u to delta star the exponential map okay therefore uh, the moral of the story is that in the in the parabolic case your uh, Riemann surface is actually biholomorphic to delta star okay and the covering map can be identified uh, after uh, choosing isomorphisms you can identify it with the exponential map restricted to delta star okay so you get this this is the parabolic case right okay then uh, let us go to so so let me put this let me put this uh, uh, the other case is the hyperbolic case that is when the deck transformation group consists of only hyperbolic elements so in that case again uh, one can do the following computation uh, case 2 uh, the deck transformation group uh, is a of course isomorphic to z again uh, and is uh, and is generated generated by a hyperbolic element element a okay in this case you know uh, of course you know you can choose b a b inverse so that the element uh, so that b a b inverse you can choose b so that b a b inverse is a form z going to lambda z lambda real lambda positive okay and you know uh, in fact um, I can make sure that lambda the lambda that I get is less than 1 because I have to only use an inversion okay and uh, if I modify it by an inversion if I conjugate by an inversion okay I can make sure the lambda is less than 1 so let me write that down choose b b so that uh, b a b inverse of z is lambda z lambda positive lambda real of course lambda real lambda positive lambda uh, 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 um, so I need uh, I can make lambda less than 1 or greater than 1 so let me see what I want I want lambda greater than 1 okay uh, so we can do this okay if lambda is less than 1 all you have to do is just use an inversion okay you have to conjugate further by an inversion then uh, that will amount to replacing lambda by 1 by lambda which will be greater than 1 if lambda is less than 1 okay. So you can do this okay then uh, so in this case what happens is that you see b of u so if you have this uh, you have this covering p circle b inverse uh, to x um, and this is of course identified uh, with uh, b of u mod z now this z being identified with uh, this z here being identified with uh, the conjugate of the deck transformation group uh, as before so I will not write it down but I want to say is that what I what I want to say is that I can identify this with again with u and I, I, I can identify this with uh, delta sub r okay so this is something that I want you to check okay so this delta sub r is the set of all z in C such that uh, r is less than mod z less than 1 okay so it is an open annulus with outer radius 1 inner radius r r is a r is a fraction r is a r is a number between 0 and 1 all right and uh, how is r given r is given by a formula so let me write down that formula it is e power minus 2 pi squared it is e power minus of 2 pi squared by log lambda okay all right here of course this is the uh, this is the natural logarithm all right this is the value of r okay and this map from u to uh, uh, delta r is none other than the map z going to it is also an exponential map it is just z going to uh, e power 2 pi i e power 2 pi i log z by log lambda. 
I want you to check that this is a covering map. I want you to first check that this is a covering map, all right, which is quite easy to do if you know the properties of the exponential mapping. And uh, uh, mind you, the logarithm that I'm using here is the uh, the logarithm that I'm using here is the principal branch of the logarithm. Okay, when you say logarithm of a complex number, you know it's a multi-valued function, so you have to choose a branch. And I'm choosing the principal branch of the logarithm here. And of course, this log lambda is of course a real logarithm. There's no problem with that. Okay, and you can check that this is the uh, this is the covering map. So the upshot of the story is that if you have a Riemann surface with uh, universal covering u, either it is u itself, which is the same as delta, okay, or if it is, if it is this case, it is delta star, okay, or if it is this case, it is delta r, delta sub r, okay, for r uh, r a fraction uh, trying in zero one, okay, and in fact it's a uh, it's further also true that if I change r then these delta r's are not biholomorphic to one another okay so that's something that you can check as an exercise okay you by using universal properties uh, by using the properties of universal covers you can check that okay so uh, all these delta r's are distinct for distinct r's okay so this gives you all possible uh, cases for uh, riemann surfaces with abelian pi 1 and uh, uh, universal covering u okay so uh, what I want to say at this stage is that we have kind of completed the first classification of all which includes all Riemann surfaces which have abelian fundamental groups. So we have classified all Riemann surfaces with abelian fundamental groups okay and uh, we have also um, uh, uh, so, so what is left out is Riemann surfaces with non-abelian fundamental groups okay and uh, the compact Riemann surfaces of genus greater than 1 okay that is those complex uh, structures uh, Riemann surface structures that you can put on a G torus okay uh, G greater than 1 so these are G tori which have been stuck together okay uh, and you get a G torus and if G is greater than 1 then the uh, universal cover has to be U okay the fundamental group is not abelian okay because if the fundamental group is abelian we know all the cases if the fundamental group is non abelian you can see it otherwise also the universal covering has to be u so if you are interested in compact riemann surfaces uh, of higher genus genus g greater than 1 okay then uh, you will have to study the mobius transformations on the upper half plane okay that is the clue to studying compact riemann surfaces of genus g greater than 1 that's what this study says okay so i'll i'll end with that